a really extreme 3D Twix design that is a Twix candy bar wrapper that's been ripped open and you can see the left Twix or the right Twix, I guess I don't even know which one it is, but one of the Twix bars is full and then the other one is broken apart and then the caramel is stretched out and the other half of the Twix is on the nail separate from the rest of the whole thing. This is kind of part of a little unofficial series I'm doing of different candy bars. I have done a few others in the past and I will put links to them in the description box below. So check that out. I think they're just so cool and the use of spider gel for stretched caramel is absolutely the best possible use of spider gel I've personally ever seen. So I hope you guys love that and don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. Bye! So we're going to begin by applying an overlay of a cover pink acrylic to the background of this nail. This is just for strength and to pretty much make the background disappear in the final design. So whatever color, so like, okay, here's what I'm trying to say. If you're pale skinned like me, then this color is beautiful. If you have any kind of a richer skin tone, I would maybe go with a darker shade of cover pink because there's a variety of them. This one just happens to seem to look really nice on me. And so just pick one that, that really complements your skin tone. And then on a silicone art mat, after that background's all done, you can set that to the side. We're going to paint a layer of metallic base coat and then metallic silver base, and then a very thin coat of a goldenrod type of a color that is sheer. So each of these colors is from Madame Glam's metallic collection, and I will put the color names and everything in the description box below. After that's done for the background, we're going to be painting our word Twix. So we have the T and then the W, and this is with, I'm using white gel paint for this. I more and more am switching to using gel paint for fine details over gel polish, especially for something that I want really sharp, crisp lines like this lettering. So if you, you know, it's kind of preference, whatever you want to use. If you are planning to use gel polish instead, I might flash cure after each letter instead of letting it go all the way to the end and then curing it because you might get a little bit of a color bleed. So then after you have that done, I will take some black gel paint and I will be adding underlines to each letter. Same thing if you're doing this with gel polish instead, especially one that is self-leveling a lot, you're going to want to flash cure this often. So instead of doing the whole word, just go through and do the same thing. And because these do get blended out a little bit, you're going to want to do one letter and then blend it out, flash cure, one letter, blend it out, flash cure. So when I'm blending this out, you want the edge of the of this black line that's towards the letter to be really crisp still but the edge that goes out onto the gold side to be what's faded and it doesn't it's not a huge fade it's just a very soft soft fade and then after you have that done then you're going to take that same black and add a whole bunch of little polka dots to the background a very fine little polka dot effect to the background once that's done and that's cured then you can do a thinner red letter on the inside of each of the white letters and if during your black outlining phase you had some black paint that got where it doesn't belong you can always go back through with white gel paint and clean that up it's really easy to do especially if you're using super pigmented paints or polish, it's not a huge deal to go back through and clean up any mishaps that there may be. So add those letters in the middle, leaving a thin white outline around them. After that's cured, apply the thinnest possible coat of gel top coat while the whole thing is getting a layer. After that's cured, peel that off your silicone mat and you should see it still has some flexibility to it. And then you can trim this into shape. I had a lot of extra gel material on the one end of my logo, so I cut that off and then I just trimmed the edges to clean them up. Now we're going to be sculpting our Twix bars on a uh, nail form backing. And we're going to be doing this in layers just like the candy bars are. So we're gonna start with the cookie layer with a creamy type of a color, sort of, it's a color that I mixed and I don't, it's, I don't know, it's like creme brulee color. We're going to be sculpting that little candy bar. So sculpt one bar that is the full length of the bar. So you have no breaks in it. And then the other bar is going to look like it was broken and pulled apart. So we're going to be doing two smaller sections and they don't necessarily have to add up to be the full length. And in fact, if you didn't want to sculpt the first bar in the full length, you didn't have to because only the very end of it's going to show anyways. So it's kind of up to you. And it might seem redundant kind of to sculpt the one bar that isn't going to be broke open with the different layers to it because it's going to be covered up and nobody's ever going to know you did that anyways. But the reason I did that is because it keeps the shapes the same from each side and it makes them look like they were, they're the same thing. And I think it just keeps a little bit more continuity. If you didn't want to do that and you want to just sculpt a bar shape out of just brown, you could certainly do that up to you, however you want to do it. I like this method because I think it keeps them the same height and the same width and everything, but whatever floats your boat. So the next layer is going to be our caramel layer and do that with a warm gold shimmery acrylic. You don't want a metallic gold, but more of just like a, well, a caramel color. 
is kind of the gist of what we're going for here. And once that's done, then you're going to open up your chocolate color and we're going to be covering these bars with a full layer of chocolate 360, de 360 degrees around them. Obviously, at this point, you cannot access the bottom of the bars because they are setting against the nail form backing. So really just focus on the top of the bars. Hopefully, they will still hold on to the nail form backing and you can easily easily do this. For me, that one wanted to release. So just take and um, I'm using a little tweezers to hold on to it. But wrap your bar up with that chocolate color. And then after it is fully covered on all the sides besides the bottom, then eventually you'll be able to pick it up and do the other side. So do the one bar and then do your other ones. When you're doing the bars that are the one that's broken in half, make sure you do leave one end open. So you can choose which end you want to leave open. So you're going to wrap the back side of them, but just leave the broken side without chocolate which is unfortunate because I think everything could use more chocolate. So if a Twix had a chocolate layer in the middle, I might be a lot more inclined to eat it. But, you know, I'm a chocoholic, so that's not surprising. So we're going to do that for both of those pieces that are broken, leaving the one side open, wrapping the chocolate all the way around them. Once you're done with that, go ahead and fill, on, uh, fill in the bottoms of each piece. You don't necessarily have to do this because these will be flat against the nail and you won't see the bottoms but the same thing i just go for continuity we want these things to look realistic do them do them right kind of my theory so now we're going to gently fold our little wrapper so it's kind of in the shape that we want apply some nail glue in the middle and glue down the first chocolate bar that would be the full one add a dab of nail glue to glue down one of the bits with the cut end out or towards the end that you're going to be cutting open hold that down and then we're going to fold the wrapper shut around it and glue it down and don't you don't have to glue it to the bars you really just have to glue it together so that it's not open anymore and then you can glue the ends i'm going to trim my ends just so they look a little bit more clean but that is optional pretty much it's if you need to and then so you're going to glue that end shut i really like this little offset tweezers that i have for gluing these things shut because i really reduce the risk of gluing are getting nail glue on my fingers which is something that i tend to do a lot so once we have our little bar and it's all glued together then you're going to need to cut it apart so make a little snip and then you're going to rip this and i know that at least for me this is such a nerve-wracking experience because i just spent all this time creating this and now i'm ripping it apart it's just kind of a i don't know i don't know how to explain the feeling until you do it you don't really understand but you're going to ruin what you just did and then you're going to glue it onto the nail so glue your opened candy wrapper onto the nail and then if you want to you can glue those two bits that are kind of flared out down so that they reveal those candy bars inside a little bit more obviously um, if you don't want to actually glue those two pieces down that's fine they might just stay a little bit flexible and eventually you do run the risk of them breaking place a glob of a bit of clear acro gel on the nail where you want the other piece of the bar to be setting and then grab some gold spider gel and stick that <laughs> stick that glob of gold spider gel in the caramel layer of the candy bar then hold that up to the partial bar in the nail stretch it out set it into the clear acro gel and then immediately immediately flash cure so when you're flash curing you're both attaching the bar to the nail with that clear acro gel and you're also curing that string of spider gel so that it stays up in the air and doesn't droop then you just have to top coat everything and this nail is all done. I hope you guys love this as much as I do. These little miniature candy bar videos are one of my absolute favorites. I will put links to my previous ones in the description box below because I think they are just so stinking cute. And I will see you guys next time. Bye. <laughs>